So what we're going to discuss now are a bunch of things about uh, how the system of logic was constructed historically and why. First up, a statement is called provable if it can be derived using the rules of logic. Well, we've discussed two separate systems. We have propositional logic where you just had like P, Q, stuff like that. And we have predicate logic where you have quantifiers and predicate statements with variables. Okay, these are two separate systems. They're definitely related. Ideally, whatever logical system you're working in, if a statement is a tautology, you should be able to show it. But if a statement isn't a tautology, you shouldn't be able to prove that it is. But for any particular statement you're looking at, a couple of things might show up. Suppose you're looking at a statement and you are unable to complete a proof. You have a rule of inference in front of you. Remember, a rule of inference is actually a conditional statement, which is a tautology. So suppose you have a rule of inference and you can't quite construct a proof of it. Does that mean it wasn't actually a tautology? Or does that mean you were not able to complete the proof? Similarly, if you're not able to prove something isn't a tautology, then does that mean it isn't one, or were you simply not able to contradict it? So the reason we're talking about this is that over the course, especially of the 19th century, math was growing more complicated, but there were some concerns that false results were being derived. Specifically, some results that were being proven seemed so counterintuitive. People were proving things, claiming them as true, that on the face of it, someone else might look at it and say, this can't possibly be right. This doesn't make any sense. So they would assume this other person must have made a mistake. But their argument looked sound. It didn't look like they had made any mistakes, but the results were so weird that people said, this can't be right. There must be a mistake in there. So people started asking this question, what are the actual rules that we're allowed to use in deriving things? What are the rules of logic? And is it possible to list out these rules in such a way that they cannot be abused, that it will not even be possible to derive false statements? So first up, some terms called soundness and consistency. So any logical system is sound, if a statement that can be proved is always a tautology. So the only statements you can prove are tautologies. That is called a sound system. A system is consistent if it's not possible to prove a contradiction. And these two notions are definitely related. So <clears throat> suppose you were able to prove this statement. A contradiction implies P. Okay, This is a tautology. If you could prove a contradiction, then you would have the hypothesis satisfied, and then you could definitely conclude P. So if modus ponens is an allowable rule, and we know this is a tautology, if any contradiction can be proved, then through modus ponens, P can be derived where P was literally any statement at all. In other words, if you do not have consistency, if it is possible to derive a contradiction, then every statement is provable, which means there's not much going on. Because not only would P be provable, so would not P. Because any statement is provable, and if P is a statement, not P is also a statement. In other words, if a system is not consistent, then everything is provable, and that's dumb. Okay. So the first thing that we are concerned with when discussing a logical system is, is it sound, is it consistent? Okay. If a statement can be proved, is it a tautology? Is it not possible to prove a contradiction? Another important term when discussing logical systems is completeness. Is every tautology provable? This is not quite the same thing as soundness. Soundness said, if you can prove a statement, it was a tautology. Completeness says, every tautology can be proved. So consistency is seen as absolutely vital. You should not be able to prove contradictions because as we've discussed, if you can prove a contradiction, everything is suddenly provable. Even negations of things you already know to be true. Everything is true, everything is false, and nothing means anything. So consistency is really seen as crucial when discussing logical systems, but completeness is a little less important. We would rather have a system that's consistent but not complete, okay? In other words, 
There are true statements that maybe you can't prove, but there is no such thing as a false statement you can prove. We would rather have that versus an inconsistent system where everything is provable anyway and nothing means anything. So let's take consider propositional logic. Okay, propositional logic is consistent and it is complete. Intuitively, this is sensible, okay? So any statement can be studied through a truth table, even if it's enormous. And columns in truth table can always be expressed in disjunctive normal form, converted into logical equivalences. Things can be evaluated. To prove that propositional logic is consistent and complete, there are many, many different proofs. We're not really gonna go through them here. Depending on the formal definitions of how you're talking about things and exactly how you define consistent and complete. Okay. Church and Post is, uh, are a pair of people that were really key in formalizing this. What about predicate logic, the quantified statements, all that? Also consistent and complete. Okay. In other words, we can't abuse the rules we've just discussed in order to show contradictions are true, but also any statement that is a tautology can be shown to be true. It is complete. This is an abridged way of stating what's called Gödel's completeness theorem. So the good news is any sentence in predicate logic is either provable or it wasn't a tautology. Remember a sentence in predicate logic is one in which every variable is bound. There are no free variables. So if you have a sentence in front of you, if you aren't able to prove it, that doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't a tautology. It just means you weren't able to prove it. But if it is a tautology, there is a possible proof, even if no one has found it yet. Okay, This is what Gödel's completeness theorem shows. Uh, and again, we're not going to get into the details of, of establishing this. But if a statement is a tautology, there is a proof of it, even if you haven't found it. But maybe you've heard of Gödel's incompleteness theorems. What are those? Here's where the good news kind of stops. If you have a logical system that includes predicate statements, quantifiers, universal and existential, and the rules we've discussed about generalization and instantiation and all that, but also has arithmetic in it, you can take numbers and you can add them and you can do products, and you don't even need lots and lots of numbers. All you need are the positive integers. Okay. So we have predicate logic, and then we apply that predicate to basic arithmetic, sums and products of numbers. This logical system is not consistent and complete. You cannot have both. So given that predicate logic is consistent, okay, we conclude that if we start throwing arithmetic into the mix, it cannot be complete. So it must be an incomplete system. And remember, completeness was that every tautology is provable. So the good news is we are consistent. It is not possible to prove a contradiction. However, there are tautologies that are not provable. This is not the same thing as saying that we haven't found the proof. This is worse. This is saying there are statements that are true for which no proof could possibly exist. So if P is true, suppose we have a sound system and we have a true statement, we cannot prove the negation of P. This is true in any sound system. So suppose we are in one of these incomplete systems like predicate logic talking about arithmetic. Since the system is incomplete, there must be statements that are true but cannot be proved. If you can't prove P is true, you also can't prove that not P is true and you can't prove that not P is false. The reason you can't prove not P is true is because then you would have shown a contradiction. You'd have P and not P. But you can't prove not P is false. By the law of the excluded middle, if you prove not P is false, you have actually proved that P is true. So if P is a statement that has no proof, there can't be a proof that not P is false either. Which means introducing P or introducing not P cannot possibly generate a contradiction if you choose one of them to introduce because introducing a contradiction from an assumption would be an indirect proof of something, and this is a statement that can't be proved. So you are free to assume one or the other, 
and either one of those assumptions by themselves can't generate a contradiction. So again, if one of those assumptions led to a contradiction, we would have indirectly proved something. Since we have something that can't be proved, either one of these assumptions on their own does not generate a contradiction. A statement like this is called independent of the logical system because assuming this P or assuming not P, one or the other, does not generate a contradiction. It is floating around as something that is you know, apart from what we've already shown. It's independent of it. Either way, you can introduce one of those assumptions and call it an axiom and just say, I'm assuming P is true because it was floating around independent of the rules we already had. Or you could say, I'm assuming P is false. These are what are called axioms, statements which are independent of the rules and statements you already have. And you simply make a choice. One, it's either true or it's false. So what are some standard logical systems? We're generally interested in proving things that include arithmetic, so we become very interested in knowing which axioms we include. Since we have predicate logic and we have arithmetic by the incompleteness theorem, there are true statements that are independent of the rules of logic. Whenever we have that, we're either free to assume it's true or it's false without generating any contradictions, and whichever one we put into our system, we're calling an axiom. So what are the standard axioms? So these are statements that cannot be proven to be true, but also can't be proven to be false. So we make a choice of which ones we're including and study, once we make these assumptions, what can I prove using them? Different choices of axioms can lead to different collections of what statements are provable. Remember, an axiom came from an independent statement and you are either allowed to assume P is true or you are allowed to assume not P is true, okay? This is only for things that are known to be independent, by the way. Just to be clear, you're not just free to assume whatever you want all the time. This is only the case when you manage to somehow establish that the statement P is independent of your existing axioms, which is generally a difficult thing to do. But choosing a different set of axioms lead to different logical systems. So how do we communicate with one another if there are different choices of axioms that lead to different things? By and large, there's a standard collection that we all pretty much agree on. And these are called the zermelo frankel axioms of set theory, frequently just abbreviated as ZF. And we'll get into this later. Okay, and in the next chapter, we're going to be discussing set theory, specifically the axioms of zermelo frankel set theory.